you know, you've got your computer all set up, you've got all your files on that computer, and all of a sudden you can't boot that computer, or you can't get access to that computer. This system here, for example, all I've done is corrupted one DLL file, and now you absolutely cannot turn on this computer. So that could be a big problem for somebody if, if that happens, if a, if a virus gets into your system and corrupts uh, a particular system file, and you don't know how to fix it. It's really uh, important for us to be able to recover the data off of that hard drive before, say, sending it into a technician, or mm -hmm. unless that technician is, you know, an OEM who's going to back up your stuff for you and you trust them. Uh, but in a case where, let's say, you've got a Dell computer and you're sending it away and it's going to be gone for a few weeks, I personally wouldn't, I wouldn't take my computer into a retail store mm -hmm. and and have them say, oh yeah, we'll back up your stuff. Don't worry about it. Um, I would need to. I would need to really trust that technician. So, right. so what I want to touch on today is now we've got that computer. I've put a couple of files on the actual Windows system, and this is a real Windows installation. But I've corrupted it so that it doesn't boot at all. Uh, so if you've ever seen that before, this is a way to get those files off that system. So right. one of the nice things now I've just inserted the Ubuntu Live CD. So now this is going to boot up from the Live CD just like it would if you were to get this and uh, run it on your computer. First thing you see is uh, what language you'd like to use, so I'm going to select English, and I'm booting this up in the broken Windows computer, and I'm going to go try Ubuntu without any changes to your computer, and I'm just going to let that boot right up. The beautiful thing about this, Carrie, is that Ubuntu, as a live CD, gives us access to networking, gives us access to the internet, gives us access to our USB uh, bus, so we can plug okay. in an external hard drive. If you've got ESATA, you can plug in an ESATA drive, copy your... What's which ESATA? Is, it, it's another port for... Uh, an external hard drive, okay, but it's a lot faster than USB 2.0. Um, so no matter what you want to back up to, it's available uh, to you from the live CD. Now, on the other hand, if your hard drive is actually physically damaged, if you hear that head slapping back and forth, like tick, 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 then you definitely need to get that thing into a data recovery uh, place. Don't boot that system up at all. But this is a case where the software, let's say Windows, or maybe you've messed something up in, uh, in Ubuntu Linux uh, playing around and, and you can't boot your system, this is a way to get into that system and actually recover those files so that mm -hmm. you can reformat or you can start repairing it or something along those lines. And you don't have to have had Ubuntu on your system, you right? You never like have to install no. it. No, we're just going to use it as a recovery mechanism. So when you say um, live CDs, mm -hmm. Now, this is what just what I picture in my head the computer doing. It's constantly going back to the CD to get the information, the right? Because yeah. you're not putting it on your hard drive. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. So we're not actually we're not actually going to put any data on the hard drive. We're just going to extract our data from the hard drive to back it up. You can get okay. your own live CD absolutely free just by going over to ubuntu.com. What we want to get is the desktop edition of Ubuntu. So what I love about this is you can you can do this from any system. So it doesn't matter uh, what is installed on that computer. You can access the hard drive. You can, you can copy your files, do the backup, uh, just like we're going to do here. Using Windows XP as the example, but it could be Vista. Oh it could okay. be another version of Ubuntu. It could be BSD or whatever. Uh, and you'll be able to do this as well. Just the file locations will be different. So refer back to uh, our previous installments about the data backup, like where you find your documents in, in Windows XP, for example, uh, where you find your documents in Vista, and mm -hmm. you'll be able to, uh, to find those okay. So I've got this booted up now. This is from the live CD. So this is what you're going to see if you boot from the CD itself. And last week, uh, actually, uh, Carrie, somebody asked, how can you access your NTFS drive from within Ubuntu? Um, and I'm going to actually show you that, because uh, I couldn't do that last week, because I didn't have a system with Windows XP installed. And just refresh my memory, um, what's NTFS? Uh, the Windows NT file system. So uh, basically, when I say NTFS, I mean a, w a Windows hard drive. OK. So this particular viewer had. Windows installed, but also Ubuntu, and wanted to be able to open the files that were on his Windows computer or Windows hard drive from within Ubuntu. So if you're watching, this is how you actually do that. You'll see, if I go down on, the, on my Places menu, like I was explaining on the show but couldn't demonstrate last week, mm -hmm. you see my 10.7 gigabyte media. Mm -hmm. That is the hard drive that's in my computer. So okay. just a small hard drive in this one, but yours will be whatever size it is. So you click on that. And it's going to automatically mount it. It'll place it on your desktop. There it is. Sometimes it will automatically open it. In some instances, I find you have to re-click on it. But th in this case, it's probably going to uh, actually open it up for me. Perhaps not. So let's just do that. Click. Oh, there it is. OK. Um, so you see that this is actually my Windows computer. So this is documents and settings and things like that. So now that we're into this system, OK, 
Uh, I'm going to bring up another places window. Let's get something else going. We could plug in, as I was saying before, we could plug in a USB external drive. So if you've got a hard drive, you could plug that into your system now mm -hmm. with Ubuntu booted, and it's going to actually detect that just like it placed this hard drive on the desktop. It's going to put your flash drive or your external hard drive right on your desktop. You can then open it up, and you've got a place to put the files that you're going to copy off of the, the corrupted Windows drive. So even though Windows is broken, mm -hmm. You can't boot that computer at all. You can't boot it, but you put this disk in and it'll just, it'll start going. It'll boot from the CD into Ubuntu Linux yeah, without ever installing oh. itself. So That's amazing. So using this CD, we can then, like I've shown here, mount that hard drive, which is currently unbootable with Windows. The other time that this would be really handy, and I've had this happen where a, a client would have a computer that's so massively infected with viruses or spyware that it's just dreadfully slow. Mm. So as an IT or as their repair guy, I want to uh, get their stuff backed up, but I don't want to do it actually booted into their operating system. So right. in that case, even though I can boot the system, it's so slow from all the spyware and stuff that uh, it's just not worth it. So I'll do this as well. Even though I could boot that system, I'm going to boot it from the Ubuntu CD and do it this way. So in this case, um, why don't I just bring up uh, a network drive? So in this case, let's go Control L to open a new location. I'm going to go SMB colon slash slash, which is the protocol we're going to use to be able to access a Windows network share. So I've got a Windows server on the network. So uh, let's see if I need to. You'll need to know the IP address of that server, I believe. I'm not sure if it will go with name resolution or not. It might. It did. Okay, so it does take the name resolution, so that's good. So you'll see Windows Shares on demo. So this is my computer. Uh, so then I can go into the shared folder, and as long as I've got right permissions to that folder, I'll actually be able to copy those files over into there. How, what's a right permission, and how do you get it? Well, uh, when you share that folder on your Windows computer, you need to, be, you need to actually set the permissions. So oh, if your okay. user account is the administrator, no problem. So can you access files, like if you have multiple users on your computer? Can you access files from each user? Like yeah, we'll get into that oh, okay. in just a moment. You'll see that yeah. as far as the layout goes. So I've actually just entered my login and password for this uh, network share. Uh, so that's what you need to do if you've got a password on the network share. This is only applicable if you're going to be backing up to the network. If you're doing a case where you're backing up to an external hard drive, you're not going to have to do any passwording or anything like that. Because okay. it's just going to be, uh, it's just going to show up as a hard drive. In this case, I'm mounting a network share. So it's a little different. So, but I did want to show you how to use SMB colon slash slash. All right. So there it is. This is my shared drive. I can create a folder on that. This is a shared folder through my network connection. So this is a separate computer. I've made a folder called backup. Now I'm going to go over here. See this, Carrie? Documents and settings. And I go in there, and mm -hmm. I see all the user accounts. So this is where you would see oh, okay. Carrie, Robbie, or whoever is yeah. on that computer. So you would go into their folder and back up their files. So it's just like you would see on Windows. So Back up their favorites, right click on favorites and copy it, go back to your backup here and paste that. This is now saving it through my network connection to a network location. Hmm. Documents, same thing. If you've got documents that you want to save, you can see that even though I couldn't boot that computer before, I can actually bring up the f files that are on that computer on the, on the Windows partition. So in this case, let's back up my documents as well, copy that. That's really all, you, all that you need to know, because as if you're using an external backup drive or a flash card, you can just plug it in. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done, you just basically you tell Ubuntu, OK, I'm done. I'm going to system, shut down, and that's going to turn off your computer. You can eject your uh, Ubuntu CD, the live CD, okay. which you've downloaded for free. So this is a very nice tool to, to have, Amazing. considering that it's absolutely free. Yeah. Um, and then if I look at my demo system here, let's see if I can find a cube face that's not Okay, so this is actually my, my Linux system. So my, my, uh, my SMB share was actually on here. But you'll see on my desktop is the actual shared folder called shared. And in that folder is now backup. I've turned off the Windows computer. And you see that I've got my documents and my favorites. Mm. If I go into my documents, my pictures, you see there's that picture that I had just backed up wow. from that live CD. So now I can feel safe to reformat the computer, mm -hmm. uh, reinstall Windows XP, not, not have to worry about it because stuff. I backed up all my stuff. So okay. make sure you do refer back to the previous episodes uh, on data backup so that you know where the files are that you want to back up. If you've got Outlook, Outlook Express. If you've got uh, Mozilla Firefox and you want to back up your bookmarks, things like that, very important that you back up everything. So, But essentially, documents and settings, you're going to find all your stuff. And as long as you back that up, you're going to be pretty safe to go.
Good to know. I've just learned so much. That's fantastic. Cool.